so now that Hoochie Mama is ready to go and she's vigorous and puffed up and I know how long it takes her to get there, she is ready to bake. This is a size loaf that you'll be able to use for one or two people to be used up in one or two days. But since it's only 49 degrees in the house, I'm going to use the Broad and Taylor. Let me go ahead and show you what this sourdough looks like now. You can see how much we've risen. I'm using a slight mixture of wheat flour with all-purpose flour. You can do straight all-purpose flour or straight bread flour, whatever you prefer. But I'm going to do 50 grams of wheat flour. Now we just do 250 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add 250 grams of warm water. The warm water should be between 70 and 100 degrees. So when you have your water ready to go, you go ahead and you add your flour. And you go ahead and mix this up. It don't have to be mixed up a lot. I go ahead and add my sourdough. And the amount of sourdough I'm going to add is 70 grams. You gotta kinda watch it because you can very easily put too much in there. Seventy exactly. With just the flour, water, and sourdough mixed together in the bowl, we put the bowl inside of the proofer for 30 minutes. While I'm waiting the 30 minutes with the dough in the proofer, I went ahead and pre-measured 7 grams of salt. I also brought over a cup of water that will help with... Um, keeping my fingers moist when I go to do the stretch and folds later. So I've got everything here by the proofer that I need now. Alright, so my 30 minutes is up. What I got to do now, I got to add salt. You want to take and add this evenly across this. That is 7 grams of salt. And then you're going to mix this with your hands. For about three to five minutes you want to make sure that your hands are wet okay I've got the salt added back in there again the dough is very sticky I'm gonna cover it with a piece of plastic wrap just lightly cover it don't have to be a lot then I'm gonna wait 30 more minutes it's been about 30 minutes. This is where we are going to do our first stretch and folds. I'm actually wetting my fingertips here. And kind of what I want to do is just kind of like put my fingers down under the dough to kind of lift up the edges of it.
And back in the proofer we go. Next, I'm gonna do some coil folds. What I'm doing now is I'm kind of just putting some water under the dough. Which will help me at the next step. What I'm going to do, I'm going to lift straight up. I'm going to let the dough kind of like fold over on itself. I'm going to turn it 180 degrees. Going to do it again. Gonna turn it 90 degrees, do it again. What it's doing by letting, by picking the dough up like this, it's actually putting tension on the surface of the dough. Then back in the proofer. Not sure if you can tell it or not. You probably can't tell it, but it's growing. So that's always a good sign. But getting ready to do another coil folds. You can probably tell that it's growing now. So again, we're gonna go around, break up the edge. Once you get the edges of it loosened up, you're gonna basically work your fingers under it and lift straight up. Once it falls, or once it comes off of the bowl, you're basically letting that slack slide under it as you roll it over. Gonna do it again. And back in the proofer. This is going to be our last coil fold. You can see that the dough is growing. Now it is half of the height of the bowl. There's some bubbles starting to form. That's always a good sign. So we're going to wet our fingers. Just like we've done all the other times. We're going to go around. We're going to go ahead and do the coil fold. Stick your hands under it, lift up till it breaks away, let it fold under. Raise up, let it fold under. So back in the proofer we go. All I've got to do is let this rise a little bit more. So now you can see our dough in the bowl is pretty jiggly. We are in good shape. I'm gonna flower this surface. I already put flour on the dough. Pretty generous amount of flour because this step we're gonna do some final shaping. We gotta do another stretch and fold
just like that. We're going to do another stretch and fold. And this time I'm going to pull out on the dough and I'm going to pull it over farther than you center line. I don't know if, could you see that? <laughs> yeah, you can see it. Then I'm going to take and rotate it, which is why you want your surface flowered so much. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to pull out and I'm going to pull it this way past the center line. I'm going to do these ends the same way. I'm going to pull it out then fold it over. Then I'm going to do this in the same way. I'm going to pull it out best I can and fold it over. I'm then going to place it inside of the banister I'm then going to cover this with plastic wrap, stick it in the freezer overnight or in the refrigerator overnight. Something like that. And into the refrigerator till morning, about 12 hours. I know I don't have the greatest lighting in here. But the reason that you're putting it in the refrigerator for 12 hours is that's what's known as your cold retard. That is where the bread actually develops its sourdough taste. If you were to actually just take and go straight from where we're at now into a Dutch oven and bake it, it's going to be a bread, but it's not going to be a sourdough bread. It actually gets its taste from fermenting overnight in your refrigerator. So that's a very important step. Now the other thing is too, if I didn't have time to bake it tomorrow, I can just leave it in the refrigerator. I think you can go like up to two or three days once you put it in the refrigerator before you actually have to bake it. So um, if you're short on time or something, don't worry about it. You can bake, you know, bake it within two or three days and everything will be fine. So I went ahead and put that banister in the refrigerator last night and now we are baking it. So I set the oven to 450 with the Dutch oven in there, let it warm up for 30 minutes, put the bread in, and now we're taking the lid off. I think we might be okay. We're about to see. Now I'm going to now I'm going to set the timer for another 15 minutes. Here's a trick you can use to know whether or not your bread is actually done. If you check the internal temperature with a thermometer, it should be 190 degrees. I'm actually showing 210. And the crust is a little crispy, so I'm calling this done. <laughs> 